It's out there just like the George Floyd video was out there. It's live in your face. Prosecutors filed criminal charges today, nearly two months after a woman stabbing death in northeast Cedar Rapids. For weeks, local activists have been calling for the arrest of a man involved in the fight outside an apartment at the Cambridge Town Homes. It started with an argument on January 2nd and ended with 29-year-old Devonna Walker stabbed to death. Now 37-year-old Shane Teslick is charged with voluntary manslaughter and disorderly conduct. A week after the stabbing, TV9 received this video showing the fight among three people, with Teslik identified as the person standing in the doorway. At one point, it appears to show him shouting a racial slur at Walker. She runs up behind the other person involved, a woman, which is when it appears that Walker is stabbed. KCRG Team 9's Molly Swain is live in the studio after hearing from the prosecutor and an activist. Lynn County Attorney Nick Maybank said this was a complicated case, especially considering Iowa stand your ground law. I also spoke to one of the activists who said they're pleased, but that an arrest is only the start. Okay, so this case wasn't normal. When asked to explain why charging Shane Teslick in the fatal stabbing of Devonna Walker wasn't a cut and dry decision, Lynn County Attorney Nick Maybanks pointed to the video recording of her death, a video that both shows Teslick shouting a racial slur at Walker, but also her initiation of a physical fight right before she was stabbed. The video does quite clearly show that Miss Walker was a voluntary participant in this in this altercation. Um, and did play a role in it. Because of that role she played, that made the analysis more challenging. While Maybanks' office investigated, protesters took to the streets calling for an arrest, saying that Walker's killing was a racist act and claiming that an arrest would have been made if circumstances were different. If Devonna was a white female and, and Shane was a black man and he and it, the situation was turned around, do you think this type of stuff would be going on? It wouldn't have took for us to fight as a community to get him locked up like this. Jermaine Cooper has been at many of the protests. Monday, he said he was on the phone with Walker's mother after the news of Teslick's arrest. She can rest. You know, I told her finally, y'all can rest. Cooper and other advocates believe it was their work that brought attention to the case. Nick Maybank said, stated that it wasn't for the protests or, or the news views for, for him to get um, uh, convicted, but I, I think it was because nobody was talking about this. Maybanks maintains the protests had no influence on his office's decision. I'm no stranger to public pressure. I've been doing this for 23 years, and one thing I've learned is that you don't make decisions based on public pressure. I respect the right of the protesters to protest and to express their grievances with the criminal justice system. However, none of that played any role in this decision. While the two sides don't agree on whether protests had any influence, they both have the same goal in the end, convict Shane Teslick. Our office wants to prosecute people, and I just ask the folks who are out there protesting and the community as a whole to support us so we can stop this violence together. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased, but like I said, this is just the beginning. Teslick is in custody in Clay County. He'll be transported in the next few days to appear in a Lynn County courtroom. Once he appears, there will be a decision about whether he'll be held on bond, and if so, how much. In the studio, Molly Swain, KCRG TV9 News.